In this video, we are going to look at a summary of organic reaction types. We're going to look at five different types. And after you learn how to recognize what type it is, we're actually going to go through a series of questions where you predict the products based on what you see there as reactants once you can recognize what reactions actually happen. Okay, so this is going to assume that you know how to name alkanes and alkenes and a number of the organic families with functional groups like alcohols, carboxylic acids, and such. So if you need help on that, you may need to go look at some of my other videos. You may find this to be in depth. Uh, assuming you know all that, we can get started with some of our basic types. So the first reaction you see here is called an addition reaction. And an addition reaction is when you would have some type of alkene or alkyne, that means something with a double or triple bond, and you're going to react that with either a halogen, meaning like chlorine bonded to itself, Cl2, or maybe F2, or you could react it with a hydrogen halide, meaning an HCl or an HF or any other uh, halogen with a hydrogen attached to it. When an alkene is reacted with either a halogen or a hydrogen halide, what happens is the double bond breaks and you have added to the chain the halogens that were there. So that's why we call it an addition reaction because the double bond breaks and you're adding things to it. So if we look at uh, right here, you have a four carbon chain with, or three, excuse me, a three carbon chain with a double bond. So that is a propene. And if propene is being reacted with HCl, well, what's going to happen then is this HCl is going to come in and break the double bond and when it does, you would insert the HCl right there. H goes to one, Cl goes to the other, and there would no, be no longer a bond between them. And so you would get a three carbon chain with a chlorine on it, and we would call that 2-chloropropane instead of propene. The double bond would be broken, and the chlorine went there. But there's also another option because this chain, the HCl, could have gone in and actually maybe attacked that way and hit, so the Cl could have gone on the first instead of the second. I'll we'll spin that back around. So what could have happened as well, you would also get this hydrocarbon with Cl on the first and H on the second. So you wouldn't just get two chloro propane, you would also get one chloropropane as well. And you have to write all the options. I don't have room to write it, but it's propane. So the, you, when you do these reactions, you have to write out all of the possible structures that could occur. This won't look right for balancing reactions, but we aren't going to worry about balancing the reactions. You're just predicting all the possible products. So you have to write the chlorine on the second as well as the chlorine on the first because there are two options when that bond breaks. So if before we do the substitution reaction, what if this same chain was reacted with a chlorine, two chlorides together? Well, these two chlorines will go in and attack right there and a chlorine will go on one and a chlorine will go on the other and the bond breaks. So you'd get a chloro here and a chloro there. If two chlorines are there, they both go in and it becomes a 1,2-dichloro propane. It was propene before, it's now a propane afterwards. The double bond breaks and they both go in. Now there's no other options. If the chlorines go in other orders, well, it still has the same name because the chlorines have to go one on either side of this double bond. When you break a double bond, you're breaking a connection between two carbons. And that means each carbon has to be replaced by one bond. This is why a chlorine won't go in here or won't go in there. And you won't have 
the chlorines attached to the same carbon because then this carbon would be left out. When you break that bond right there, each carbon needs to make a new connection. Okay, so that is our addition reactions with some types. We'll look at substitution reaction now. In a substitution reaction, what's different is you're starting with an alkane, no double bonds, no triple bonds. And you would react it with some type of halogen. Chlorine, fluorine, bromine, doesn't matter, but some halogen, anything from group 7. What's going to happen is you're going to get the alkane with halogens on it, and you're also going to get a hydrogen halide. So let's see what that would look like. Here we have a three carbon chain with nothing on it, so that is just propane. Propane reacted with chlorine gas. Well, what's going to occur here is instead of both molecules going in, like happens with addition reactions and double bonds, with substitution there are no double bonds and only one of these will go in and it will attack and a hydrogen will be displaced. So it's they're like they're switching spots. So you would go over to your chain and you would take off a hydrogen, put a chlorine in its spot, and the other H that came out will hook up with the Cl, will bond to chloride. And so you will get a 1-chloropropane and you will get hydrogen chloride. Hydrogen chloride. But what's to say that this Cl initially, this first one we drew, what's to say it was to go in and attack that hydrogen? It could have gone in and attacked somewhere else. This chlorine could have attacked the second hydrogen, and the second hydrogen could have popped out. So you would also get, in this case, the same molecule, but the second hydrogen could come out and a chlorine could go in its place. And so you'd also get two chloropropane, and you don't need to write the HCl again, but you would include that with your products. So you'd get a one chloropropane here, you'd get a two chloropropane, and you would get HCl. Now the astute observer might ask, what about the third option of that chlorine attacking a hydrogen on the third carbon and were it to come out? If that was to happen, it would be on this, you could renumber the molecule as starting this as carbon one, and when you name it, it would still be a one chloropropane. So you don't need to draw it at the other end, it's the same as the first product I've drawn. Okay, so eight minutes in and we've done two different types of the reactions. The, there's two types of elimination reactions. So substitution and addition were one, uh, two different types. Elimination is a reaction where you're going to create double bonds. You're eliminating it because you're creating, I spelled that wrong, creating double bonds. So just to have it down there, this is a way I get the students to remember it creating or making double bonds. So notice an alkene is being produced. You get other things as well, but an alkene is produced. So if you start with an organic halide, that means a hydrocarbon chain with a halide like fluorine attached to it. So if you start with that and you react it with the hydroxide ion, so OH with a minus because it's an ion, well, a, a number of things are going to happen. First off, what's going to happen is that halide, the, fluori, the, the fluoride ion, is going to come out by itself at the end and be a fluoride ion, so you put a charge on it. Okay, But not only will a fluoride go out of there, if you're going to create a double bond, uh, one of those hydrogens from an adjacent carbon has to go as well. So if this hydrogen comes out of the chain, and it reacts with OH, you would get HOH, which is not head of household, HOH, water, hydrogen hydroxide, and now you've created a deficit on this chain. There are two things missing from it, so that chain now will have, these have been removed, and you now will create a double bond there. 
And so your products are a 1-butene because you've got a double bond on a butane and water and the fluoride ion. However, there is yet another option because when this fluorine was kicked out, maybe this hydrogen on the other carbon went. If that hydrogen was to go out instead, then what it would happen is this same chain, we'll clone that guy right there. So this same chain that came out, that would mean that this H was still there this H left and there would be a deficit between those the, the middle two carbons the double bond would be in the middle and that is a 2 butene instead of a 1 butene so that would be a second option where it could occur so long story short when you're looking at these chains when you're looking at elimination and you're creating double bonds remember that you isolate where the fluoride is, where the halide, I'm just moving the stuff out of the way here, you isolate where this fluoride is and the double bond will either be created to the left or to the right of it. So you could have a double bond on the first or the second, wherever that hydrogen or wherever that uh, fluoride would be. Okay, so that's a third type of elimination react or a third type of reaction. It's one of the eliminations. Another elimination is when you are going to have an alcohol, anything with a hydroxide on the chain, and it can undergo an elimination reaction as well, but it does it when it's in the presence of an acid, meaning there's an acid there to make the reaction occur. The, it doesn't matter what the acid is. It doesn't really take part in the reaction per se. We don't need to write it in and balance it, but just the mere fact that the acid is there can cause the reaction to happen. So what happens is an H and an OH come off of the chain to produce water and the double bond, since you've removed two things, the double bond will get created. Now, if this H and OH came out, there would be a double bond on the other side. But since my example is such a simple little three carbon chain, it would still be one propene, regardless of which way you went with that. So long story short, H and OH come out, creates a double bond. So alcohols under, since you're creating a double bond, it's an elimination reaction and alcohols undergo elimination reactions. The last type to show you is when you create an ester. And the way you can create an ester, we call it a condensation or an esterification reaction. And so you need to have a carboxylic acid reacting with an alcohol. And when a carboxylic acid and an alcohol react, what's going to happen is the hydroxide from the alcohol and an H from the end of the acid will hook up together and create water. Part of the reason why you might call it a condensation reaction. So water is being produced. And then what happens is if this H is gone and that OH is gone, this carbon needs a bond and that oxygen needs a bond and so the chain will occur right there. The carbon will hook up to that and you're seeing it right here. This was your original uh, carboxylic acid. This was your alcohol. And so the connection, you'd have one long chain, three carbons with a double bond oxygen and a single bond oxygen, and then the two carbon chain. Now this is an ester, so the way we name that, as you'll see and as you recall from other videos, it is a three carbon chain attached to so the alcohol is a propane or was a propanoic acid. So that becomes a propanoate or propanoate. And you've attached a two carbon chain to it. So the ethanol becomes ethyl as a branch. So we call that ethyl propanoate. Okay. Almost 15 minutes in and we've seen all the types of reactions. I'm going to forge ahead and we're going to do some examples. So looking at an example, if all you were given was the reaction of 2-butene and bromine gas, your first challenge is to draw it. So I have a four carbon chain. 
a double bond on the second carbon for 2-butene and bromine gas. Now I look at the reaction and it doesn't tell me what's produced, but thinking of my uh, addition reactions, a double bond is what you start with. It will get broken. The bromines are going to come in and attack right there. And so this chain is going to be rewritten over here. You're going to break that double bond and you're going to add in both of the bromines. So you get a bromine on the first and a bromine on the second. And that makes it a 2,3-dibromo uh, force propane. So propene became propane with both of those attached. The type of reaction is addition. Addition reaction. All right. So number two. If you have cyclohexene, so that's a six carbon ring, ene means there's a double bond on it, doesn't matter where you put it, and you react it with hydrogen chloride. Well, if it's a double bond, then that HCl is going to go in, and when you break one double bond, you're gonna create two connections. So this ring is going to be here, and you're going to have created an H on one and a Cl on the other, and since in a ring you can number that wherever you'd like, you'd call this carbon 1, and it would be a 1-chlorocyclohexane. And so you don't need to write the 1, chlorocyclohexane. And then your other option you might think is that the H and the Cl, maybe the H would have gone here and the Cl there. And if you reversed those two in their order, you would just call this carbon one and you would still get one or chlorocyclohexane. So you get the same product after the arrow. There's nothing else to write. You've broken your double bond. That's what you get for number two. Question three, you have an alcohol, sorry, you have an acid, carboxylic acid, and an alcohol that immediately tells you that you are going to be creating an ester. It's an esterification reaction. So how would you create an ester out of this? Well, you're going to have your acid and alcohol are going to come together. The H and the OH are going to create water. And then this chain will attach right there and create, I'll just group it so I can squeeze it down, make it a bit smaller so it fits there. So you will get a three car four carbon here, so butanoate and two carbon attached ethyl. So there's our ethyl butanoate. Don't forget you also created water. Number four, you have a alkane, three chlorohexane. So there's a little chloro right here on the third carbon. And you're reacting it with a hydroxide ion. When you're reacting with hydroxide ions, you are creating double bonds. We call those elimination reactions. That was one of our elimination reactions. So in an elimination reaction, you create a double bond. You're either going to create the double bond here or there. So the chlorine comes out by itself to become a chloride ion. One of those H's is going to hook up with the OH and make hydrogen hydroxide. And then the next thing you're going to get produced is you're going to have that chain come out. Man, I didn't clone it. So you're going to have that five carbon chain. One, two, three, four, five. And you're going to create a double bond on the second and then have hydrogens everywhere. Or you're going to have the five carbon chain with the double bond on the third. Okay, so then in this one would have them everywhere. Uh, too many bonds. So if you're looking at that, you might think, well, don't these two have the same name? Because this guy would be a one, two, starting at this is carbon one. This is a 2-pentane uh, or pentene, 
And if you started at this carbon as carbon 1, it would be 2 pentene, and you would indeed be perfectly correct. It's actually the same either way. You only need to write one. If it has the same name, it doesn't need to be written twice. Oh, wait, that's six carbons, isn't it? I can't count very well. It says hex, and I keep saying five. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it does have, my apologies, it does have a different name. This is two hexene. And your other option, if it went on the third, so one, two, three, four, five, six, if it went on this one, it would be a three hexene. If it was a five carbon chain, and you were on the middle, you wouldn't get a repeater. But if it's a six carbon, as you see here, then you do get both options, a two hexene and a three hexene produced. My apologies for that. Question five, a fifth question. If you have an alcohol in the presence of an acid, whenever you had something in the presence of an acid, what was happening there? If you remember, it was also an elimination reaction. In that elimination reaction, you are creating a double bond again. Where do you create the double bond? On either side of the alcohol this time. So this H and that OH would connect and make water. Or this H and that OH hook up to produce water. And you have to write both of those options. So you would put a double bond on the second carbon. So you could erase uh, the H and OH here. I'm going to have to move it down. thought I had this planned out. So you create a double bond there and get that as one of your products. And the other thing you would get, if we move that out of the way, the other one you would get is the same four carbon chain but the double bond in the middle instead. So two here and your hydrogens around. So you would have one butene, two butene, and water being produced. Okay, so just a few more. Uh, if you have a cyclopentane and fluorine gas, if you would look at this one, what's going to happen is a hydrogen is going to come out and an F is going to go in. That's a substitution reaction because it is an ane. It is an alkane being reacted. So because of that, you will get HF, hydrogen fluoride, and one of those carbons is going to have a fluorine attached to it. And so if we take that one out, put a fluorine in here, drops these all of a sudden, and you put a fluorine there, and you would get one fluorocyclopentane. And no matter where else you put it, you're still getting one fluorocyclopentane. Uh, right? If you put it in the second carbon, you would just renumber it. So each time you're just getting the same product. Seven is a reaction I didn't talk about, but you should remember it from earlier chemistry courses. When you have a combustion reaction, of a hydrocarbon, any combustion reaction is producing carbon dioxide and water. So we throw it in once in a while with these reactions. You don't need to worry about balancing it. So you, I recognize there's going to be many carbon dioxides and many waters, but you would bond carbon dioxide. Each carbon needs four bonds. Each oxygen needs two. So C double bond O to either side would be carbon dioxide and water. HOH again, oxygen needing two bonds, hydrogen needing one, so it looks just like that. Okay, and your last one, if instead of a cyclopentane, if you just had pentane, well, a hydrogen comes out, fluorine goes in, but you couldn't, you didn't have to just do it on carbon one, you could also do it, so it doesn't have to just have a fluorine on carbon one. It could have had a fluorine on carbon 2 instead and have one right here. Or it could have even been a fluorine on carbon 3. There are different options you could have. So you would write the first one 
and the second one and the third and don't forget you still have hydrogen fluoride kicking around so you'd have a three fluoro pentane a two fluoro pentane and a one fluoro pentane and you write down all of those options very long video that has all of those things in there but it's a good little tutorial for you hope you learned something